I almost... Hello, everybody, and welcome to Season 1, Episode 5 of Scrollers Chat. I'm your host. And tonight on our show, we are going to be talking in Tarsia with our guest, our uh, guest speaker for the evening, if you will, uh, Mr. Bruce Worthington. We're going to go down and introduce everybody on the panel, and then we'll uh, turn it over to Bruce, starting with Mr. Charles Daring. Howdy do, I'm Charles Daring. You can find me at woodenvisions.com. I'm just self-promotion there. Uh, all my social media links should be there, but in case they're not on YouTube, I go by Charles Daring Scroll, or you can just look under Charles Daring. You'll see the wooden version of me doing this. And I'm most active on Facebook, and I go by the Charles Daring on there and Instagram, and maybe even Twitter, but I don't remember because I'm not active there. But thank you for having me, Mr. Lay. Thank you, Charles. All right, moving on to Mr. Carl Taylor. Hey, Lee, thanks for having me here tonight. Uh, Carl Taylor from just north of Atlanta. Home of the Falcons. Football starts in 30 days from that summer, so we've got to redeem ourselves. Uh, you can find me on Facebook and several other places. Uh, Scrollsawvideo.com. Scrollsaw and Woodworking Videos on YouTube and Facebook group Scrollers on YouTube. All right. Thank you, Carl. Moving on to Katie Dalton. Don't forget to unmute yourself. I'm, I, I, sorry. Go ahead. Now we can't hear you. Poor Katie. We can't hear a word you're uh, saying. Katie, we cannot hear you, so we'll come back to you, okay? But you're not muted. Yes. I don't know what's going on. We can't hear you. All right. So moving on to Shane. Well, hi, everybody. My name is Shane. You can find me on all your social network medias, uh, mainly on Facebook under my name, Shane Cole. But I'm also on YouTube under Shane's Hobby Shop. Go check me out there. Also, Facebook, Shane's Hobby Shop, but very seldom on that one. And Lee, thank you for having us tonight. And this is our first time on the panel. My name is Shelly Cole. Many of you know me as Mom. My YouTube channel is Know What Mom Knows. I have been not around for the last several months, but I am back in action making videos, and I have a video that should be up, I'm hoping, within the, the week, within the next seven days, where I will be scroll sawing sawdust. So you're going to want to check it out. It's actually going to be pretty nice, and I've already seen it, and I know y'all going to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. My God. We like Can't it. wait to see it. <laughs> All right. All right. That's, uh, Katie, have you figured out your audio? Okay. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah, ma'am. Okay. My name's Katie. I'm mostly a uh, scroller, a uh, woodworker, and wannabe. Uh, I'm, I'm really beginning and uh, got a lot to learn. Uh, love all the people in the woodworking community. Everybody's so good. All right. Thank you, Katie. Go ahead and mute yourself. I, I muted Bruce when, when, when we had background noise. Uh, yeah, Bruce. I think he was trying to adjust the camera. So it's all good. Uh, okay, Bruce, I'm going to unmute you now. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. I don't know if you can unmute him. I think only the person that... that you can okay. mute people. Okay, maybe you can. I do. Okay. Right, Bruce, go ahead and introduce yourself. I'm, <clears throat> I'm Bruce Worthington. I've been doing Intarsia since 1988. I've got uh, Facebook groups, and I'm all over social media, uh, mostly in Facebook, <laughs> under Bruce Worthington. I probably have a little over 220 patterns available online and um, have sold to every country. I mean, sorry, I've sold to every state in the union. Plus, um, I think it, about 10 or 12 countries, which is not always fun because they uh, rip you off sometimes. But anything, uh, I haven't done one of these before and I apologize for the camera. I'll have a, my other camera set up on there next time we do this. Not a problem, sir. I, I do actually have one little clip on the top of my monitor, 
but I didn't think about getting it out before this. <laughs> uh, my, uh, in case there any of you that know my patterns, know that they range from simple to really, really bad. <laughs> but I like detail. Oh, I do too. I, I'm, a, I'm a stickler for it. Uh, I think Lee had to step away for a second, so I'm going to babble for a little bit. Uh, real quickly, okay, for those that don't have a clue what intarsia is, what is the difference between intarsia and segmentation? Intarsia is three-dimensional uh, using separate woods. Uh, segmentation is using the same wood, cutting the pattern all out of one piece of wood, and then shaping and staining or or uh, using colors okay so the the key to intarsia is different species and different pieces right it is it is more difficult because you have to make the pieces fit in segmentation you're cutting them all out of the same board so they automatically fit yeah the odds are better <laughs> how many years have you uh, been doing i'm sorry if i interrupted you, you can keep oh, that's right. i've been doing this 29 years now googly moogly um, Roberts had a pattern in Wood Magazine of a little owl in a tree. Uh -huh. <clears throat> I tried it and I was hooked. I have never tried it. I, uh, I'm i afraid I'm going to get hooked. <laughs> I can't afford it right now. Uh, you might. By God, it, yeah, because scraps, you can use a lot of scraps for a do you Do you do it by hand or you do some kind of uh, computer program? The the pattern works. I used uh, Pattern Wizard to draw my patterns. I actually use uh, Photoshop to, if I'm looking for a certain pattern, like I did a tea set a long time ago, I couldn't find one that I liked to make a pattern from. So I used six different pictures and combined them together on in Photoshop Wow. to a semblance of what I wanted. And then I put it in Pattern Wizard and drew a pattern from that. Now you, you're, you, I don't mean to keep jumping around. I have different questions keep popping into my head. I'm not. I don't mean to not acknowledge the last answer you gave. Uh, you you say you like to add detail. If you're anything like me, and I don't mean to keep comparing, as I just love detail too. But uh, here's a different kind of detail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do Do you have trouble seeing detail and leaving it out? I mean, do you have to battle yourself to not include certain detail? Oh yeah. I now. The two patterns that I'm working on right now that Michelle Gallant just made for me is a zebra family with a mother and baby zebra and a tiger family, a white tiger with a mother and baby. Black and white, basically, and all stripes. So you got to have a lot of stripes. And uh, most, most Bruce, often. Do you want to screen share that so we can, uh, we can see it? I don't know how to share it. Uh, Okay, we'll look into that for you. If you oh, yeah. if you are uh, if you move your mouse around on the hangout screen, you will see the icons on the far left. Go to the second one down. It's a green box with a white white. Uh, yep. Yeah, you click on that and click one? on full screen. There you go. Then you just choose the page you want to share. Okay, we do got a, a question in the chat room from Sterling Davis. If you stack right. and cut different species of wood, would that be considered in Torgia? Um, well, I don't know what I just clicked on, but <laughs> uh, that was screen share. You can minimize that and then that happens. choose where you're wanting. That happens to everybody when they screen share. You yeah, just, just the one you want. Yeah, on you your... just min minimize the hangout and whatever you want to share with us. If you stack cut different species, would that be considered in Torgia? Um, stack cutting is fine. I mean, you're still using the same kind of woods. I'm the different kinds of woods. I am lost on how to get rid of this. <laughs> uh, go, go to the biggest window and hit the minimize uh, dash. That one. I right missed there. it. Did you say yeah. marquetry? I missed it. No, marquetry is actually uh, veneers. And thicker woods would be uh, segmentation. Right. Yeah. Okay. Because he said if you stack and cut different species, would that be considered intarsia? But you can stack and cut different species of veneers. And well, that's you can true. Have, that's true. Veneers um, are. Marquetry. 
Because I know I do marker trees, so that's why I was going to say that. <laughs> By the yeah, way, Bruce. The tears are flat, though, and Antarctica is not flat. And Br yeah, Bruce. true. It's different. He just didn't specify the size. Yeah. John didn't specify. So. Uh, Bruce, you, ended, you accidentally stopped screen sharing, so <laughs> if you want to reset oh. that up. Uh, yeah, you stopped. Isn't this fun? That's okay. We all had to figure it out yeah, one time yeah, or another. It, 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 it takes a while. It's nothing. I, I can walk you back through it. Just go go to the far left of the screen, hit the green icon. Yep. And once you've done that, click on full screen and uh, minimize the biggest window. So that way it's not so confusing. <laughs> it says your entire screen. Yeah. Yeah. And click share. That. Okay. If I hit share, I'm going to get all those things again. Yeah. And then you just minimize the biggest one. There you go. And then go to whatever you're wanting to share. Here. Yeah, you're... No, that was my mouse. Never mind. Put hey, your what, I did, what I yeah. did last time was actually uh, minimize the big window, and everything went away. Oh, well, that shouldn't have happened. Uh, just minimize that. Yeah, okay. just that right there, that right there. Yeah, now now don't do anything to that box. Just go to where wherever you want to... Uh, Show something? Find this the files. Yeah, we'll see everything you're seeing. This there is... You go. Oh, I didn't well under Photoshop, but this is the zebra oh, pattern. Wow, that is cool. Now that's when I make these patterns, I make a color version to use as a guide when I'm making it. So this is actually the color version. I showed you the, the wrong one, but I'll get you the other one up here. And four. Um, I'm oh here we go. This is the uh, the finished version. Now that's literally all the wood. That is beautiful. What is most often used to represent white? Maple or ash? Uh, or aspen, holly. Aspen. And uh, maple is kind of an off white. That's true. That's true. And the dark, oh. I assume, is usually that could be ebony, that could be wingy. In this case, Michelle used um, what you call cooked oak. Ah. And it's kind of baked oak. And it gives it an almost black. We also can ebonize. The uh, the ebonizing is uh, you mix steel wool and vinegar. Yep. Put it in a mason jar, and it will uh, it will make a uh, a fluid that reacts with a tannin in different kinds of wood. Uh huh. In this case, uh, it will turn it all almost black. Now, if anybody, if, if anybody wants to research that, is it spelled T A N I N? I don't remember or T A N N I N. I think it's T A N I N. I actually have a um, on Intarsia nuts, and on my other site, I have an article on making ebonizing fluid. Oh, okay, good. Hey, Bruce. Yeah. Why can't you just use zebra wood? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> zebra might, might have worked. That that was good. I, I got to give that to you, Carl. <laughs> okay, there. I said it, but Sterling was thinking it. No, oh, that's funny. That's now, this good. is this is the mother. I like that. Now, that is see, Michelle just finished that one. I have to label the pattern because she used several different kinds of wood in it. The um, off white is basswood. The white is uh, aspen, but she's actually used a, a texturing wheel to texture it. As and a, a couple of different colors in the ear. Is a texturing wheel like a flap, a flap, a sanding mop, flapper, whatever you call it? No, um, Judy Gell sells one. She calls a wonder wheel. Okay. And I, it's, I, uh, it's a really good tool. You you keep mentioning the name Michelle. Is is that a your your spouse or is that? No, actually. Uh, Ever so often, because I have a limited amount of time to do this stuff. Uh -huh. There's the zebras. Um, some of the friends that I have will make some of my pieces for me. Okay, because I, I know I've heard the name Jeanette Square in, in conjunction with yours quite a few times. Well, see, we were in Creative Woodworks almost every issue for eight years. There was only a couple of issues we missed. And when I, know, when I first started, I was making the pieces. But uh, Jeanette did such a great job on them and had the time. Yeah. That, uh, 
she we set up a deal where she'd make the piece i'd do the pattern she'd make the piece and uh i would write the article i need to so, set up something like that with somebody <laughs> i can a, do the patterns all day it's the dang cutting that takes forever there was a symbiotic relationship that worked out quite well we we yeah. still do the uh, the barn swaddle that's in scroll saw magazine this time is mine good but she did the article on shaping that's 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 very neat what is your most most popular pattern uh up till now um you know probably charlie's angel and i don't know if uh if you've seen it or not i don't recall to be honest with you i'm gonna i'm gonna bring it up here this is my website by the way and that is intarsia net okay uh see the flag counter there yes sir I, I put that up about two months ago i have had something like 67 countries visit me so far wow and 48 out of the 51 u.s <laughs> territories i need to add that to my site how do you do that <laughs> if you, you click on that it'll it'll let you get a link for it oh now this uh there it is it's coming and you have some beautiful work there yes you some do. of it i made some of it jeanette made yeah that's charlie's angel beautiful uh, i don't know how many of you were around when chuck norris or charlie norris was around uh don't recall if he was in charge of related i i didn't i don't yeah. know a whole lot of names in that community well it was a few years ago and before i actually started doing creative woodworks he was uh, him and his wife would do the cutting for me when I didn't have time to but he did shows as well and he wanted me to make him a pattern that he could make relatively cheap and this was the design I came up with it was uh, a clip art that I found and, and modified and I sent it to him and he liked it but he wanted a couple of changes so i said okay and i made a couple of changes he laid down and to take a nap and never woke up oh man so this one was in creative woodworks magazine way back and i named it charlie's angel for him and the piece that you're seeing right there i sent to his wife that, that is a heartwarming story he was he was an exceptional person he actually is the one that taught jeanette how to shape and do intarsia. He was her uh, mentor as well. But he was an exceptional person. Uh, let's see. There's that tea set I was talking about. I don't know how big the picture will come up there. So I combined a, a platter, a coffee cup. These two were together, the vase, and then the rose came out of something else. You, de you definitely and, have the knack for getting the 3D to pop out. I mean, I said that uh, part of the 3D for me is to actually is the shaping and the shadows. This is one of my favorite pieces, but the magazine wouldn't take this one because they said it looked too sad. Oh, uh, <laughs> really? Red, red tape crap. Uh, all due respect to the magazine. <laughs> but now, see the, the shaping on this yeah um, that was I'm, made by hey, there's another magazine that might take that you know yeah <laughs> it's been on here for quite a while though um henrietta colbert colbert yeah made that one this was a painting i did uh probably 35 years ago hey bruce can you and zoom in on those pictures yeah Unfortunately, that's a small picture. Uh, hit Control Plus on your compute keyboard. Control Plus, huh? And you, you said your website was intarsia.net? Yes. I'm going to have to turn a light on to hit Control Plus because I'm blind to the net sometimes. And I'm not, oh, there we go. Okay. And I have a question for you, too, in a moment when you're ready. There you go, Bruce. That's better. 
Yeah, it's it's still a small quality picture, and that's to keep people from stealing it. You know. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> I have some some more on there, but this I did this painting probably 35 years ago, and it had a background and everything with it as well. I decided it would make a good pattern. It was also in Creative Woodworks. That is gorgeous. Yeah, I, that. some people don't understand why I blur my pictures, or I've gotten to where I do them in an angle sometimes too. And it's not because we don't trust the whole of the community. It's just, unfortunately, the bad apples. And if you're anything like me, where you kind of rely on the income of it, you know, every little every little cell helps. <laughs> I don't rely on the water, color, but... Now this one right here, a guy called and asked me for a picture of Jesus as a carpenter. Cool. Wow. So I made Jesus as a carpenter. That is and gorgeous. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph in it. Beautiful. But now see the, see it's got an ax right here. It's got shadows. It's got shadows on the feet and the hands. I add a lot of shadows because it gives it dimension. Um, some people, okay, yeah. Kathy Wise, for example, she doesn't put shadows on anything. She, her pieces uh, are pretty, <clears throat> but they're not the same kind of detail, except for a couple of huge ones she's got that are definitely detailed, mm -hmm. like that leopard. That one uh, called The Gift. Oh, wow. And I gave that one to my sister. That's beautiful. They, they, now these plans that you have, do you also specify what wood you got into it? Yes. Yeah, they're all labeled with uh, the wood types. Most of them are labeled with the grain direction. Some of them like the tiger and the zebra. I put a notation on there that if the stripe runs like up and down, then that's the way the grain should go. If the stripe runs left to right, then that's the way the grain should go. Yeah, I believe the the grain the grain of the wood, and there again, I've never tried in charge of it. I can see how it's important to the realism of the of the piece, like yeah. like this like, one, like that boat. It follows the contour of the shape of the boat. Yeah, this one is a, a real good example. Or arc, sorry. The girl that uh, used to be the girl used to be in charge at Scroller, uh -huh. not Scroller, Hall Magazine, but Scroller. Me and her were talking one day, and, and I wanted to do an arc. And we were talking about it, and we decided, you know, nobody's done one with a bird flying back to the arc. So that's where that one came from. Uh, Sterling Davis is wanting to know if you have a Last Supper pattern. Yes. And Tarja.net, Sterling. Oh, wait. Here's the nativity. Yeah, got a really nice one, Sterling. There. There's the nativity, and there's the uh, Palm Sunday. That one was made for a doctor down in South Carolina. The piece that it, well, the pattern that I made for him was 84 inches long. Holy monkey. That is a lot of bloody detail. Yes, it is. Um, we're getting to the Last Supper. It's down here. If you're anything like me, you, you when you were cutting them yourself, you hate yourself during that, but then you you have that sense of pride in yourself. Like God, why did I add so many pieces? <laughs> you know. <laughs> okay. There's the Last Supper. Eight hundred pieces. Wow. Wow. Most of them are right across that table. That's beautiful. Now, how long would it take you to do something like that? Me? <laughs> I've started four of them a long time ago. I've never finished them. <laughs> But I, Charlie did this one, and uh, he spent uh, probably 100 hours on it. Wow. But he gave it to his church. It was donated, I think, in his name. That is gorgeous. Uh, Shelly Cole on the panel here has a question for you. Yeah. Yeah, I have a question for you. Earlier on, you mentioned that Antarja is 3D. But perhaps did you possibly mean 2D by chance? Because 3D would mean that the pro the project would stand out to the point where you could, I think, if I've got this right, where you can see all sides to it like a statue. That would be considered 3D. But 2D, you you would stand out uh, like forward. 
like like intarsia i would always thought of intarsia as 2d to 3d uh, just thought i'd mention it's been called 3d many many times but i think it's because uh most of the time we don't make it so as you can see all the way around it exactly but um uh, it is like this all those birds stand out from the tree the branch on the bottom wow. and the branch on the top stand out from the tree yeah i see so, what you mean by the illusion of the the different woods and how it is so it's it's probably right. a 2D actual, an actuality, a 2D project, but 3D because of the illusions that you get from it. And you are correct. That front bird totally looks 3D because yeah. he looks like a full bird. Many of those birds look very full and round and plush. So that whole thing jumps it. out at you. Well, you get it a, does. There's a it good does. story on this one. I I made the the bottom part was was made by me, but Jeanette made the original one for the magazine. When I made this one for my wife, uh, she wanted something above it. So I made the arch up there, and after I got it finished, she said, that needs a little bird or something. <laughs> so I have a pattern I call Wonder, and that little bird is one of the three birds on that pattern. <clears throat> so I added it after I had already finished the piece completely. Wow. This one, this particular one you're seeing is hanging on my dining room. Even just choosing the right woods has to be kind of a an inner battle, unless you get used to what works for what. I've got uh, 57 different kinds of wood, at least, in my shop. Googly moogly. Hey, Bruce, question for you, please. Yeah. What do you use to keep your woods from fading? Uh, keep, you know, mostly you keep it out of the sun. And sell it real quick. <laughs> Well, sorry, sorry. Actually, the, the, there are several pieces hanging on my uh, living room wall that get a moderate amount of sun, and they have all faded over time. Because they're made of different colors of wood, they still retain some of the color. Now, uh, cedar, for instance, will turn to just about one color all the way through it. Yeah. But Can you go back to that bird pattern yeah, on the tree? The sun. Hmm? Can you go back to that pattern that you had with the birds on the trees? Yeah, just a second. Right there. Yes. Okay, that bird at the top on the top right, is it red or is it like an Osage orange or what is that? It's, uh, it's red. Most of the time I use bloodwood, uh, red heart, and uh, paddock. But Paduck is more of a reddish orange. And that is but red heart and bloodwood are the two woods that I use for red most of the time. How about I, I, the blue? Yeah, that blue. Hmm? The blue what and the bird on the left. That I, I have a I rarely ever use any kind of stain except for bluebirds, because I want them to be blue. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say that I've never seen a wood that blue, but you know what by God, sometimes you just gotta think and do it. Yeah. Well, there is a wood that's, that's almost blue. It's called Blue Maho, and it is a bluish gray, but it's not real blue. I see you have the male and female cardinal. You have the male and female at the bottom, I believe. Nuthatches, uh, finch, bluebird. And cardinal. And two cardinals. And that little bird up on the top, I had to show you that pattern. This pattern actually came from a photograph. Uh, come on. I, uh, oh, it's starting to move. My computer seems to have frozen up a little bit. There it goes. There it is. Now, that was a photograph of three real birds, and that was the expressions on their faces. And I just loved it. <laughs> Sometimes now, where, do you creates you itself. Your, where do you get your wood from? Do you special order? And if so, where from? Well, sometimes Ocho Lumber out in Oregon and uh, Cook Woods both have uh, excellent choices of wood. And they will actually send you, I know Cook anyway, will send you a uh, intarsia kit, which means that they'll give you a lot of cutoffs and stuff that are different kinds of wood for you to try out. 
you just have to ask for it. And then woodcraft stores carry a, a large selection of exotic woods. I've got a lot of them from there. You said that's Old Cook? Ocho and Ocho. Cook. Ocho. Ocho and Cook. Uh, I have a link page on my site that has all the all kinds of uh, wood sources. But there's one really good one if you're looking for a specific kind of wood. It's called Wood Finder. And you put in your area code, and it will find places around you that carry the woods that you want or close to you. Thank you. Uh, Florence Lady is asking what pattern would be best for beginners, or do you do you any longer I, sell beginning patterns? I actually have, if if somebody wants to, to try to get started in this, I don't make this smaller, Lee. Yeah, probably control the, minus. Control minus. I'm looking for the minus. Is it? Uh, it's on the same key as the, uh, it's to the left of the Wait. plus and equals. Or, Here we go, I got it. I would guess if you want to start okay. off, do something flat like the American flag. That way you can get your uh, curves right on that. And also the stars will give you a little bit of detail to do. So start this with the right. American flag first. See this right here? This uh, teddy. Yeah, that teddy bear would be a perfect beginning one, I would think. That teddy is an ebook right here. It's a free pattern. Sweet. It's Getting started, the layout, the inlay, the shaping, the detailing, and the finishing. A oh. guy named uh, Jim Adams uh, mostly wrote this. That's like chapter one, chapter two. He walks through making Teddy. And that is a free ebook on Intarja.net for those that are just now joining us. And right there is the pattern. And it's it's on there as well. <laughs> You make it any size you want. Doesn't cost anything. And he did a really good job. He, unfortunately, I think, is, is not around anymore either. Well, that's unfortunate. But, yeah, it looks like he covered it pretty thoroughly. He did. And then when he's got the finish down here in Chapter 6, and then there's Teddy when he finished it. It walks you through some of the tools you would use, how to shape it, how to make it look more 3D. Uh, it, uh, and it doesn't cost anything. And then also on here, uh, Chuck Norris, Charlie Norris, <laughs> did a second ebook for me. I always thought that was funny. His name was Chuck Norris. Yeah, I, I, I get it. <laughs> I was <laughs> trying not to laugh out loud, but I screwed up. This uh, second ebook on here. If it pops up for me, is uh, shaping an intarsia rose. The rose is actually Judy Gale's pattern, but he walks you through how to shape it, and he does a good job on that too. Is that free as well? Oh, I see. It's coming up down here. It's kind of a PDF pattern. Oh, okay. I mean, PDF uh, book, so it's coming down on the bottom. Is that another free ebook? Comb them through a whole bunch of times. It's free as well. Awesome. Of course, the pattern isn't free because that's Judy's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I can't pull it up, but anyway, it's it's there, and it is a free pattern. And then I don't know if any of you have seen this dragon before. Uh, I'm not it's, sure if I ever. I thought that was a phoenix. <laughs> nope, that's a. This dragon is called the Guardian, and this site that I just clicked on and took to is Buffalo Works. He has a six six chapter YouTube video on making this dragon. Yeah, Ron, Ron, okay. Yeah, he's on the, uh, I believe he's very active on the uh, scroller, scroll, uh, what the heck is the name of the website? The, the magazine's website, the forum. Oh, okay. I can't well, he did the... Uh, he did this and somebody told me about it and I went and watched it and I asked him and he said, put it up. I don't care. Sweet. So he has a, that six, oh, the, the shape in the intarsia rose came up. <laughs> These things only happen when it's live. <laughs> of course. 
It probably it came up more than once. <laughs> now, when you when you add a finish to these woods, do you do it before you assemble them to the backer? No, I don't. Uh, some people do because they like uh, the finish all the way, and I kind of like the finish to fill in the cracks. Yeah, yeah. If there is any, and it kind of helps hold it together. But sometimes the you know the glue will dry up eventually, and sometimes a piece will pop off, but it doesn't happen very often. And for those but that don't, also warp. Yeah, for those that don't know, uh, intarsia they aren't glued side to side necessarily. They're all glued to a backer that is all one piece. And we used to have a guy who uh, never used a backer. Really? Well, that's he, brave. He thought it was a better example of his woodwork if you could see how the back was put together as well as the front. So his pieces were side glued. But he never used a backer. Well, I can't he, imagine that. Yeah, they used to have some heated arguments on it. Yeah. Uh, Florence Lady's wanting to know, uh, what do you use for sanding if you can't afford a flex, flex drum, drum sander right away? Drum sander? Um, well, the, the inflatable sander is actually uh, like a drill press. The inflatable sanders are actually pretty cheap. Yeah, very, very cheap. I can't remember where you buy them, though. I also use the uh, the soft rubber ones that you put uh -huh. a sleeve on. I have those on one of my sanders. I have two different sizes on it. Well, I have the Wonder Wheel on there as well. And then I have a, a small one that I use, and I also use a Dremel to do some of the shaping. And I know Carl Taylor is big on Dremels, but you don't have a YouTube channel, do you? No. Not yet. Okay, why not, bro? I work full time. <laughs> Already. I work full time. <laughs> <laughs> Link page, by the way. And it has all those different wood sites Ocho and uh, Cook Woods, Wood by Mail. Um, any of you, if you, you know what Blue Pine is? Uh, I, I've heard of, a lot of people use it to get that grayish color. Yeah, but blue pine is rare. beetle kill pine. It's what? Beetle kill pine is beetle kill pine. Uh, it's been infected by a blue beetle that turns uh, the wood gray. The residue from this beetle turns it gray. Companies consider it scrap wood. Wow. We consider it like gold. Oh, absolutely. Go ahead. It works well for water. Works well. Works well for shadows. And it's, there's a company called the Handsome Woodman, who uh, we get a lot of blue pine from, and they will send it to you, especially if you you're doing intarsia. Awesome. What does somebody have to do to get their their link put on your website? Hand hand. <laughs> uh, just send it to me. Okay. All you gotta do is send it to me. All righty then. I'm mean, even get Kathy on here. If you have a banner, I'll put the banner there. If you don't have a banner, then I just put your link up. And four. But there's, I go through this every once in a while to delete some of the dead links. Yeah. Because a lot of people will put a site up. Yeah. And it'll go back. Uh, eventually, it'll go away. So I have yeah. to go through here every once in a while and look for sites that. Ten four. And four. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, the link. I think the panel's showing now. I don't have to hide them anymore. There's my teddy bear. Okay, we have your logo. I think your your camera either went out or oops, you lose something. Uh, not not audio wise. We lost you visually. Uh oh, well, let's see. He's actually your teddy bear. Your last couple of minutes. Here, let's talk. Show those teddy bears right there, Bruce. Hugging. I, I don't see anything. I see. I just see his uh, the, the standard blue circle with a blue person in it. I see it. This is it I see a screen. Hey, does anybody else on the panel see a screen? There's his bear. Yes, sure do. And I see it in the chat room. But like I said, it comes and goes. Oh, well, poop. So this uh, this bear pattern I call bear hugs. I was making it. My wife said, "Now what are you going to do with that?" 
because that's what happens when I make a lot of pieces. I don't have any place to put them and I don't do shows anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I have, I, I keep talking about myself. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll stop doing that. Uh, well, I mean, how are, I know at times money can be an issue for the average person. I mean, do you, yeah, do, do, for a lot of people. Yeah, do you do it more for the passion now and keep the pieces around or just because you don't have the mental energy to go out and try to sell them all? Well, when I used to do shows here, uh, my work honestly wasn't nearly as good. That was quite a few years ago. I didn't take the time on it to make a, I mean, I made decent pieces, but they weren't like show quality, uh, like a gallery quality. Uh -huh. So now I actually spend a lot more time. So to sell the pieces for what I would have to have for them around here, there's nobody who's going to pay the price. There is one show out here, the Ann Arbor Street Fair, that I think coming up next week. It's four street fairs in one, and it's been around for ever, since the 1960s, I think. And um, you could sell whatever price you want to ask for your work there. Wow. Those people get more money than they know what to do with. Huh. I need to go there. Yeah. I mean, honestly, they are a juried show. There is four different shows. And people that sell at other art fairs around here jack their prices up when they go out there. I, I've found most shows I've done, I've had to bring the prices down because they tend to be podunk. I, I guess I'm just, you know, by default, I'm accidentally finding the broke towns. <laughs> I just want to show you guys really quick. Um, you guys, I'm still presenting Bruce, I think, but uh, you guys want to see something really cool. Um, Bruce is actually one of our Antarctica designers for our magazine. So a lot of his patterns are actually in our magazines. So if you guys go through and you check out the magazine, uh, for instance, his Hugging Bear is on the cover. And this is uh, this year's spring. So you guys can yep. And if you, I flip this backwards, you guys can see a lot of the covers have, oh, there's his bird, and Sweet. there's his white house. So you guys can see a lot of these covers have wow. his patterns in them. Uh, for instance, here's the white house. I can zoom that in for you guys. It's kind of hard to see on the cover, but um, this is the, summer of uh, last year. The, the lighthouse there, there were two lighthouses, and I did those and made them for a girl cancer let me see if I can, let me, uh, let me see if I can pull them up for you there we go so you guys can see them there's the two lighthouses that Bruce designed wow. Very nice. and then on the next page you can see these hats these are all the hats for his entire bird My and, yeah my wife loves that bird uh, but it's a different hat and they, they attach by magnets and here's so his one hat off and put the other hat on. Here's Bruce. his angel right there. That's his angel for the Christmas cover. Country angel. Yep. Or yeah, thank country angel. And that's Beautiful. the uh, 2016 <clears throat> holiday. So a lot of his um, stuff are in the magazine. So if you guys check out the magazine at uh, Scroller's Choice, mag.wixsite.com slash home, which is right there if you want to check it out. Uh, uh, so Bruce Sterling Davis is wanting to know if you can give the user names and or links to your Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, etc. Facebook's the only one I'm on and it is Bruce Worthington. So if you look for me, but oh, there's wow. also, I have a Facebook group called Worthington House in Tarsia Patterns. Worthington and, House in Tarsia Patterns? Yep, okay. in groups. And I will usually post any new patterns there. Awesome to know. There you go, Starling. I have a lot of woodworking friends on Facebook. Like 2,400, I think. I'm not even sure yeah. if you and I are friends on Facebook. Hey, Bruce, turn your camera back on because you're uh, still presenting your screen. Yeah, you can You can uh, uh, just stop screen sharing. You just click that same uh, icon again. That one? Uh, yeah, the green one. Yeah. Yep. There you go. There you go. <clears throat> now the uh, yeah, for people that haven't tried Intarsia, 
it's kind of like making your woodwork or your artwork come to life. Absolutely. Because it has dimension and color. And I used to do each, each kind of art. I've done paintings. I've done ink. I've done drawings and charcoal. Um, I've done stained glass. I've probably done just about any kind of crafts. But intarsia was a way of combining woodwork and art. It's kind of like painting with wood. Except it's a little more three-dimensional or dimensional. Yeah, I have a history of drawing, too. I uh, also just realized we weren't friends on Facebook. Shame on me. <laughs> we are now. I'm surprised. I, I thought we were. I'm surprised. Well, by golly, you're stuck with me now. I'm going to blow up your feed with all my spamming. <laughs> <laughs> buy my CDs, buy my CDs. I only have six out now. Come on. Bruce, question for you, please. Yeah. Do you have an article on your website of woods that are not recommended for use with intarsia because of the toxicity? I have a I have a file about toxic woods and it talks about each type of wood and what kind of toxicity it has. Like ebony has oil in it and the dust, you don't want to breathe it. I mean, you can use it, but you don't want to handle it a lot or breathe it. There's cedar is a good example. It's a carcinogen. I'm allergic to cedar now. When I breathe it, I, I stop up like I got a cold. But uh, there is a there is a file in Antarctica Nuts about toxic woods, and I think I have it on my group as well. If I don't, I'll put it in there. It, it talks about each kind of toxicity in the woods. Some of you want to breathe, some of you don't want to touch, or you want to wear gloves when you're using it. Each one has a different kind of, of uh, problem. Wouldn't think about most of them, though. I'm going right, to, you know what, I think, it, come to think of it, I think the link is on my webpage as well. All right. Does anyone have any more questions for Bruce? Uh, not right off answer. I'm multitasking and I'm not good at that. I've got one. Yeah. I've got one. Okay. Yeah, okay, Bruce, go I saw earlier on your website where, I, mean, I don't know where, but where um, the left hand side of the screen, it would show like, for example, um, one hundred and fifty-five dollars, and then there was a bunch of words, and then it would show, like for example, eighty-one pieces, and then it would show eight dollars. What That's was? The yeah, I know. Let's what was that pattern. meaning? What was the? What was the one hundred and fifty-five dollars, and what was the eight dollars all in one line? What would that be? The one fit. I don't think there's anything that says one hundred and fifty-five dollars. Usually, well, just an example. It could be two twenty-five. Could yeah. be one eighty-nine. I just I saw well, some big numbers, and then I saw words. And I saw little numbers, and I'm like, all the, the same thing. You were probably seeing that? the pattern number. You were probably seeing the pattern number. Really? Okay, because it looked like I, it looked like a dollar sign to me. I saw it a few different times. I could be wrong. Well, on the on the oh. scenery pictures, every pattern starts with S. Scenery. Oh, that could be taken as a dollar sign. Sure. Yeah, the animals oh, all start that. with A. Cartoon animals are C A. Christmas okay. that kind of thing. Okay. So you were seeing the pattern number. You, okay. The piece, the size of makes sense. How many pieces are in it, and then what the cost is for the pattern. What is your What is your personal favorite theme to do? Would that be a uh, religious? Uh, actually, I do the religious ones because they sell. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Crosses sell well here. I do enjoy doing them, but I actually I actually like. Uh, I like all the birds, mm -hmm. and I, I have quite a large selection of birds, but my actual favorite, and I have very few of them, is fantasy. Uh, absolutely. Some of the fantasy I don't do, like the, uh, I don't do like fairies yet, but I probably will, because they have a limited market. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they tend to do well in little girls' rooms, but yeah, it depends yeah. on where you're at, too. I love the animals. The animals sell well. Yeah. I did a uh, a Mofon ram, 
and uh, the guy sent me a picture and said, you didn't do the horns right. It's supposed <laughs> to be done this way because I know what a ram's horns look like. So I sent him a picture of a Mofon ram <laughs> and showed him the antler or the horns were supposed to look like on that one. Uh, I'm very particular on you know the type of animal. If it if it has a certain name like a Mofon ram, then I make sure I put it on there. Mm -hmm. Somebody will call me on it. Yeah, doesn't it make you feel good though when you can prove yourself right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <coughs> that uh, that falcon that was on there that showed the falcon sitting on a, a log. Uh -huh. I redesigned that a couple of times because it looked too much like something else. So I changed it around until it looked like what I wanted it to. Yeah, I've, I've, I've for some reason, been able to find, well, I've been trying to work on different horse designs, and it's hard to find ones that don't look like other ones. I mean, every now and then, the the way the wind is blowing or the, the pose the horse is in, you know, there's a difference in there. But when uh, what I do doesn't involve color, so it, it's really hard sometimes to separate, to have many of the same theme, but still diff different looking. Yeah, I've... Uh I've toyed with the idea and Lee kind of helped me on one of them of changing or not changing, but doing all my patterns as scroll saw patterns as well. There's a number of them that would, uh, uh, scroller magazine actually did my nativity uh -huh. as a scroll saw pattern with, uh, with my permission, of course, but they sell it and they send me the same amount that they would send me if they actually bought the pattern from me. That's good. So works out fine, but they didn't want to do the rest of the religious ones. And the guy was asking for them because the religious ones, they said, didn't sell as well for them. That's strange. Cause uh, I think in the U U S uh, we were talking about this, I believe on the last show, at least where I'm from crosses do very well. Uh, maybe it's only certain religious ones or, or is it religion in general? You know, uh, they, all my religious patterns sell well. The magazines don't want to do them because uh, they don't want to be labeled right. a certain kind of religion. Yeah, yeah. I but can now, that. Scroller uh, actually carries most of my religious patterns. And they uh, sell well, but it seems like the scroll saw patterns don't. Bruce. Huh. Bruce, behind your head, there's a picture of Betty Boop. Yep. Is that in target pattern or just a picture? It's just a picture. Okay. She's uh, actually it's a, it's not signed by her, but it is a a numbered collectible my wife got for me. Sweet. I have Betty Boop all the way around this room. <laughs> I have a red the Red Wings emblem up on above my desk made out of intarsia. That's one I don't sell. Um, I have fantasy knives. <laughs> this is my room. <laughs> so you, I, I would, I would, uh, I would guess you're probably a fan of uh, uh, what's his name? I knew his name right before I started to talk. Boris before Vallejo and Julie Bell. Yep, I love before their got, art. Before they got together. Yeah, that it, it's just they got some beautiful. I think there's not another guy named Frank. Yeah, Frank Frizzella, or something like that. Something like yeah, this. Believe yeah. he did. Like, I've got calendars from both of them many, many years in a row. I wish I could get the rights to make their stuff into patterns, man. Oh man. Yeah, they they used to uh, they used to not be a pair. But yeah. They finally got got together. They make a a great couple. That's a power. Well, I, absolutely. I mean, uh, <laughs> I don't know of any uh, scroll saw and Tarja marriages. <laughs> uh, well, Judy and Jerry, but Jerry's gone now. So that uh, they got together quite early on. Well, uh, Karen and Dirk Bowman, technically, I mean, I know I don't think she does anything other than run the side. I could be wrong on that. Does she do anything or, or is she just the business end? She scrolls. Okay. Yeah, they both scroll. Um, uh, Sterling Davis is wanting to know where you can find your scroll saw patterns, not your intarsia ones, but your scroll patterns. Is that only in Scroller LTD or Scroller? Yeah, the, the one for the nativity is Scroller is the only one that sells it. 
Yeah, scrolleronline.com, uh, Sterling. Yeah. It's a... If that's for me, I'm not here. Go ahead. Uh, actually, it just quit. It said incomplete data. <laughs> <laughs> they must have heard me. <laughs> that was strange. Well, we just got a little musical panel going on tonight. Yes, we do. A of things happening here. Play me a song, baby. Come on now. All yeah, right. Well, I, hey, uh, Bruce. Uh, yeah. If you're all done, I'm on the... Uh, Let me take that. All right. Yeah, I think my wife's trying to get a hold of me, so I guess I better <laughs> Before we sign off for the night. All right. Your audio is going ape crap. Uh, late. Uh, the Midwest Food Show is coming in August. Okay. And uh, it's going to be August. I'm going to pull the website up real quicker. So give me one sec. Oh, uh, by the way. Anybody has any questions for me anytime, just drop me a line. I'm always happy to answer emails. And my email address is pretty simple. It's Bruce W at Intarsia.net. My God, you can't forget that. Bruce W at Intarsia.net, not dot com dot net. Yep. Same. I don't net. go to Judy and she won't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bruce, I really enjoyed it and I did learn a lot. I did too. Thank you. Very envious of your talent, sir. Well, maybe we'll set up another one of these. I can come visit again. But I'll have my camera this time. You I'm what? I found somebody who can beat Charles in scrolling. Okay. He's always been the top king of it, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we have a uh, picnic down there next year, maybe we can meet a bunch of people. Yeah, that'd be fun, yeah. I think I think oh. I think Shane almost complimented me, and that's very rare. <laughs> yeah. I when I said it, you know, I, as I said it, I was like, "Oh my!" I think I just insulted the man. No, it's like I'm I losing my bad reputation. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna jump in there, Charles. I love your work, and oh. and the way I look at woodworking is, I look at every woodworker, no matter what their field is, if it's intarsia, if it's scrolling, whatever. Each person who is involving themselves in the project, to me, they are their own artists and they have their own uniqueness and their own soul to the project yeah. that you cannot really compare to somebody else. They're always yeah. going to be different. Well, that so, and what was said earlier about the community, the community is non-competitive in my opinion. I mean, maybe they, they challenge themselves more than each other, I would think. And when, when, when they, we lift each other up. We love each other's projects and work. It's, yeah, and all yeah. these uh, these challenges and contests out there are more so to get the people to participate than to actually compare. That's right. Yeah. Yep. I love what Excellent. I do, but it's not a money maker. Go ahead, and, uh, uh, Carl. No, I just got to say I uh, appreciate y'all having me on tonight, but I got to go. Oh, is all right, okay? Carl. Oh, never mind. That was too personal. Uh, good having you. All right, thanks. <laughs> nice to meet you, Carl. Nice to meet you. I forgot we were live. <laughs> we're still live, so... Have a good night, Carl. All right. <laughs> All right. Before we sign off for the night, I want to just plug the Midwest Trade Show real quick. So uh, it's Friday, August 18th, and Saturday, August 19th. Uh, tickets are five dollars each day, or eight dollars for both days. Uh, go to MidwestTradeShow.com to check out their website, and uh, that's all I got. Anybody else got anything? Uh, Bruce, me and Sterling have sent you a friend request on Facebook. No problem. I'll be on there uh, very shortly. I'll probably be napping very shortly. <laughs> uh, uh, Jeff, a, lot of times, a lot of times I look at somebody's page before I accept them, unless they've got like 100 friends common with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then I know they're a woodworker. And I ever so often I'll get some spammer and they'll say, hi, and I've got great news for you. And I'll say, unfriend. Facebook, <laughs> Facebook lotto. <laughs> I'll say, goodbye. I'm not saying all my friends are ugly, but when I get somebody that's too good looking, they're usually spam. <laughs> <laughs> but anybody that wants to add me as a friend on there, I'm, I have almost 2,500 friends on there, so to speak. Yeah, I have about, about, about the same. Yeah. 
that's so to speak <laughs> yeah uh yeah more like acquaintances on some of them uh, anyways i, I yeah. couldn't get too personal thomas o'donnell says great show thanks bruce and we echo that sir glad to finally speak to you after all these years of knowing your name he, well yeah i've known your name forever too <laughs> <laughs> well, I, hopefully i don't want to guess what context of course i'm using myself to deficit fabrication <laughs> but uh uh Jeff Robinson is saying Charles's house in September 2018. I'm okay with that, but my wife might not be. <laughs> Ken McCrory says he just got here. Sorry, Ken, you got the time zones wrong. <laughs> but thank you for being here. But it is recorded. Okay. Yeah. I, um, so you can look back on it. I got Watch it on YouTube. Life, so she's up north tonight. So you guys have a good night. All right. Be good. Uh, thank you so much for being here, Bruce. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, then we're going to go down the panel and say good night, uh, everybody. Shane, thank you, guys. Both. Thank you for having us. We really enjoyed it, mate. Yeah, Shelly Cole, Giddy. Shane Cole, uh, Know What Mom Knows. Shane's Happy Shop. Shane's Happy Shop. All right. Katie Dotson, thank you very much. Charles Daring. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everybody that came in, checked out our, our show on the YouTube group. Or page, sorry about that. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. See you later.